Greetings nerdlings and welcome to Amalgam Nation Presents World of Lorecraft, Racecraft, Quillbor Edition. Quillbor are a race of humanoids native to the continent of Kalimdor. They have long since battled for the rights of their lands against the orcs since their immigration from the eastern kingdoms. Many people simply call them boar men or pig men. Quillbor are primitive, resilient, fearless creatures who inhabit the central barrens of Kalimdor in the labyrinthine maze of thorns called Razorfen Downs. After the War of the Ancients and the subsequent sundering of the world, Quillbor's surroundings became increasingly hostile. Forced to fight for food and precious land against both Thorin and Centaur, they had developed into aggressive and efficient warriors. Though well able to handle themselves in a one-on-one -on -one battle, they are not above striking from ambush or even sacrificing themselves to destroy even one of their many enemies. Quillbor History 10,000 years ago, during the War of the Ancients, the mighty demigod Agamagan came forth to battle the Burning Legion. Though the colossal boar fell in combat, his actions helped save Azeroth from ruin. Yet over time, in the areas where his blood fell, massive thorn-ridden vines sprouted from the earth. The Quillbor, believed to be the mortal offspring of the mighty god, came to occupy these regions and hold them sacred. The heart of these thorn colonies was known as the Razor Fen. After the War of the Ancients and the subsequent Great Sundering of the World, Quillbor's surroundings became increasingly hostile. Forced to fight for food and precious land against both Thorin and Centaur, they developed into aggressive and efficient warriors. Quillbor Culture The Quillbor are a scattered people. After centuries of aggression against the Thorin, Centaur and any other species that stood in their way, they no longer have a land to call their own. They are terrorists and thugs living on the fringes of other societies, claiming slivers of bloodstained territory from weaker settlers. In Quillbor society, strength is highly valued. Female children and sickly male children are often abandoned, left to fend for themselves, or to die at the claws of the beasts. Family is important to the Quillbor, but only as a source of more warriors to drive against their enemies. Almost from birth, young Quillbor are indoctrinated with teachings of hatred for other sapient species. Quillbor hold no distinction between politics and religion. Their ultimate leaders are also their religious leaders. Bands always led by shaman. Smaller groups are led by the strongest warrior, often referred to as a brute. Very rarely will more than one Quillbor warband be found in a single jail geographic area unless under the leadership of a particularly charismatic shaman or other strong leader. There is no known Quillbor king, though those few tribes large enough to claim distinct names do have shamans of great power and influence who act as tribal leaders. The laws that govern the Quillbor are simple. For the tribe to survive, the Quillbor must breed and the females must bear and protect worthy offspring. Each member has his or her role in the tribal structure. As a whole, the Quillbor are a male-dominated species. Even though rarely seen by other species, their females must constantly keep their heads, faces and quills covered. Otherwise they are allowed no other ornamentation and can be killed on sight for touching a weapon, although this is not always the case. Females feel no resentment over this fact and indeed the males do not see themselves as superior. Quillbore males grow taller, heavier and stronger than females. A typical Quillbore male grows to 5.5 feet tall and weighs 220 pounds. A typical female grows to 5 feet tall and weighs 150 pounds. For this reason only males take up the path of the warrior. Female Quillbore possess such strong tribal instincts that most do not even desire to follow the male's path. Occasionally a female decides that her place is in battle. If the woman can prove herself this is fine. In fact, these women are respected. On occasion, a female child displays such unnatural strength that the shaman deems her a man. She then trains as a warrior and lives in all ways like a male, even taking female mates. Tribal legend holds that such unions have occasionally produced an exceptional Quillbore warrior, though no scholar has confirmed the tale so there is little or no stigma attached to such situations. Among shamans, there is no gender bias. Many women walk the path of shaman. Shamans are all so respected that most hold positions of power in the tribe, and many in certain tribes lead. Women and children must defer to adult males. Adult males must defer to any quillbore they can't defeat in personal combat, and all must defer to a shaman. Punishment for failing to defer properly can be quite severe. The loss of a hand or an eye is common, though death is not unheard of, particularly for females or males who can no longer hold their own in combat. Quillbore punishments are intended purely to cull the weak. Rather than die on a sick bed or as a result of punishment, aging warriors will often hurl themselves against enemies they know they cannot defeat. A ferocious, suicidally brave race with alien mentality and a slavish devotion to their tribe 
Quilbor defend their territory with a zeal bordering on fanaticism. They care only for ensuring the survival of their species to the point where weaker Quilbor gladly sacrifice themselves for the benefit of others. Outsiders see Quilbor as stupid, vicious pig-like predators. In truth, Quilbor possess a rigid social structure and deeply law-abiding personalities. The only laws they value, however, are their own. Quilbor are born with an instinctive drive to preserve their species. Quilbor always want more territory so that they may increase the size of their tribe. For this reason, they act like bullies, constantly threatening and harassing their neighbours. Due to the rigours of their society, Quilbor offspring grow up quickly. A Quilbor reaches maturity almost as soon as he can walk and hold a spear, usually about three years after birth. Quilbor mothers take no care to cuddle their children, so sickly infants usually die. Quilbor do not form family units. The females compete for the attention of the strongest males, and the entire tribe tends to the infants. To form the best possible tribe, Quilbor quash internal jealousies and rivalries harshly. All must cooperate to ensure the tribe's well-being. Weak, crippled, and elderly Quilbor, who feel that they can no longer aid the tribe, seek debt. Quilbor have no need to execute their infirm. The elderly destroy themselves out of a desire to aid the tribe. Most seek death in battle, but when doing so is not an option, they take their own lives by wandering into the wilderness, hoping to slay at least one beast that may have posed some threat to the tribe. Quilbor do not frown upon this ritual form of suicide, rather the tribe views it as an act of bravery and devotion. Quilbor shaman teach that the law of the wild is the standard by which all tribal members must live. Survival of the fittest. When a predator culls the weak from the herd, it is cause for celebration. Those that die do so gladly knowing that even in death they have contributed to the success of the tribe. Despite their low intelligence, Quilbor possess good common sense. At least one Quilbor every generation walks the path of the shaman. Quilbor never seek to become shaman, but a few are awarded the right to study with their elders when visited by dreams of former shaman now deceased. Shaman usually rise to positions of power and leadership within their tribes. Most often it is males that receive the dream vision that sets them on the shaman's path, although female shaman are not uncommon. Quilbor shamans possess the abilities to combat or cause disease, to control nature and to summon spirit force. According to Quilbor shamans, the existence of sickness is caused by the intrusion of other species on the rightful lands of the Quilbor. They teach that until the invaders are driven out and the Quilbor have returned to their promised lands, suffering can be alleviated through a heroic death. The afterlife for Quilbor martyrs is filled with wonders and pleasures beyond imagining, according to the shamanistic teachings. Quilbor Settlements The great mass of Razorfang Kral was conquered by the old crone, Charlga Razorflank. Under her rule, the shamanistic Quilbor stage attacks on rival tribes as well as horde villages. Crafted from the same mighty vines as the Kral, Razorfend Downs was the traditional capital city and burial ground of the Quilbor race. However, when Charlga Razorflank rose to power, she allied with the Scourge and now the city is inhabited by the Scourge undead. Charlga's Death's Head tribe and other reawakened dead. The Crone rules the bulk of the Quilbor race, however, from the Kral. The two feuding Quilbor tribes encountered in the Barns are the Razor Manes and the Bristlebacks. The Quilbor occupying Razorfen Downs under the control of Amanar the Coldbringer are the Death's Head tribe and Razorfen tribe. Quilbor can be found throughout Mulgore, the Barons and Durtar. The Swangart tribe within the Bristleback tribe may be represented by Swangart Spearhead as Spearhead is also used in Razorfen Spearhead and Withered Spearhead. Quilbor Languages Quilbor speak common and low common as primary languages. Sometimes Quilbor learn the languages of their enemies. Thank you for watching and as always remember, play to game and game to play.